Hi, this is Mingyao from Singularity Engineering. This is the fifth in our series on ventilation studies using ANSYS CFD. In this video, we'll do a multi-phase analysis and looking at mixing uh, and the effect of concentration of different gases in an environment. This will be a transient simulation, but we're going to start with a steady state analysis. We're going to take our existing simulation here and make some changes. So this is uh, our model from the last analysis, uh, in video number four. It's a single phase analysis, making uh, the entire room is composed of air at the 25 degrees Celsius. Um, we've been working with various ventilation studies, and one of the things that people are interested in is what happens when there's a release of a certain kind of gas. Uh, maybe not in a classroom application, but perhaps in a science classroom or something. So let's look at what, how, how do you simulate mixing of different gases in a multi-phase analysis. We're going to start this by importing a couple of materials from uh, our library. So we're going to go to the ideal gas list and we'll, we'll make a liquid, uh, a gas that's uh, it's a combination of nitrogen and oxygen. So this is pretty much air. Um, so we've ad I've added two ideal gases, N2 and O2, into our materials list. Then we're going to make a mixture. So I'll call this our air mixture. And uh, go with a variable composition mixture, and it'll just be based on O2 and N2. There's some mixture properties that we you can specify, but we're going to just go with ideal mixture in this case. Uh, then uh, we, we're going to switch the material from air, ideal gas, to air mixture. Everything else is set the same, except our density will be different. We'll set uh, just a reference density of one kilogram per meter cubed. Um, thermal energy, shear stress transfer as the turbulence model. Um, N2 is going to be the majority of the concentration, so this will be our constraint. And O2 is, we're going to use the transport equation. So this reduces the complexity of the simulation. And you can see you can add as many of these species as you, as you want. So if you want to do N2, O2, and carbon dioxide, or some other gas, you can just have more and more of these components in the model. So very easy to set up. Um, in the supply side, we're going to have to specify how much oxygen there is by mass. So we're going to do with 21% oxygen coming in. And similar to here, 21%. And that's, that's it for a steady state simulation. We always want to run a steady state analysis so that we have an initial step to, to uh, a good starting point. Uh, the initial conditions we need for these models is we need a distribution of all the different mixtures, which is pretty easy to set up. If I have constant values everywhere, then it's going to be 21% oxygen in this whole domain. Uh, we also need velocities, temperatures, and pressure everywhere in the domain, and those are much harder to set up properly unless you start with a steady state simulation. So I always start with a steady state simulation. And then I duplicate the system, and I create a transient simulation based on that steady state result. So we'll call this one and this will be my transient. Okay. Connecting the solution from one to the other will cause the result of my steady state simulation to be used as the initial condition of my transient simulation. Let's go into my transient analysis and set up some additional details. OK, 
Okay. So for transient simulation, we typically we want we need to specify total time. So I'll say uh, let's, let's do a three minute simulation for example. Um, the time step I usually like to do adaptive time stepping for this type of analysis because initially we're going to have fairly small time steps as we release some sort of gas from a beaker, from a tank, or in this case I'm going to release it from the floor. Um, I guess I could also release this from one of the desks that may be interesting, but we'll do the floor for now. Uh, so initially we'll, we'll want fairly small time steps and then um, as, as time goes by we can kind of uh, increase that. So maximum time step will be 5 seconds and uh, minimum time step is what I started with. Usually the maximum target loop, I set this to 10 and 8, something like this, which means that if it takes less than 8 iterations to converge, ANSYS will, re will increase the time step by 6%. I'll keep doing that every time. If it, if it takes more than 10 uh, loops uh, for the transient simulation to converge, they'll try to decrease the time to 0.8. These simulations are pretty stable, so I don't uh, and if I set it to 10, um, by default the maximum target loops is 10 already, which means that it's never going to decrease the time step. It's only going to increase. So basically I'm saying start with a fairly small time step, run the simulation for a while, and if it converges really well, take bigger time steps. And if it don't, no longer converges very well, it takes 8 to 10 steps to converge, then hold that, hold that time step. So this gives us some flexibility and makes it easier to set up these um, uh, varying conditions. So let's uh, specify a mass flow rate from one of these locations. So I'm going to create an expression and this will be an expression of uh, uh, we'll call this gas release. Um, Okay, so let, let's say we're uh, going to release 10 kilograms. So we want to convert the gas release to a, a, a time formula. So we, we, we want to do, let's say, 10 kilograms per second. This is a, a, a mass flow rate. Right? And we want to set it to a, uh, a, a function of time. So I can say if right, can right click and find the right variable. So <clears throat> if time this run or time is less than 10 seconds, then we want to release the uh, the gas at 10 kilo kilogram per second. If it's more than 10 seconds, we'll set this to zero. kilogram per second. Okay. We double check this, so we, let, let's plot this kind of 0 to 60 second expression, and you can see that at 10, it feels like this, then it drops below. If you have some more complicated curve, or if you want the curve to be a function of temperature, or pressure, or velocity, you can certainly write equations for that, or you can create a user function and define a linearly interpolating curve between a, a set of points. So a lot of easy ways to define uh, time-dependent variables here. So here I'm going to say the floor is going to be an inlet down here and there will be a certain mass flow rate which is a function which is our uh, gas release rate. Uh, temperature um, so we, we want the, so set the temperature, let's say we're releasing liquid nitrogen, um, which is about minus, minus 196 Celsius, um, age of air is zero, and mass fraction is zero oxygen, so it's all nitrogen. So we're going to be releasing a certain amount of nitrogen into here. And it's going to mix with the normal air from above. Okay. 
So solver controls, it says warning, this should be a large number so that it, it will adjust, but I'm, I'm going to leave this for now. Transient analysis requires an initial condition unless otherwise specified. So, okay, um, that's fine. So uh, we're, we initial, we specify the initial condition based on the, uh, this connector here. So that's our initial con con uh, condition setting. And finally, output has no intermediate. So that's a problem. It's only going to save our last results. It's not going to save any of the intermediate results. So we can say uh, every time step, I'm going to say time interval. So just save results every 10 iterations. Uh, and that's it. So that's all I would have to do to set up a transient simulation. We're going to run the steady state first, pass the results over, and start iterating through time. Now obviously transient simulations takes a bit of time, so I have an existing uh, result set up here. And I'll reset my, my um, transient results and we can take a look at what this uh, simulation looks like. So, let's create a plane in the YZ plane, and that should be fine. So, it's over there. We can color this by uh, oxygen mass fraction or mass concentration. That's the actual absolute concentration, so let's go with mass fraction. And you can see that in the red area we have 21% oxygen, but near, near the bottom here we have a lot less. Uh, and this is because we can choose a time, so I ran it for 3 minutes. This was what the condition was initially at uh, 0 seconds, and you can see that as uh, time goes by there's more and more gas released and then the gas kind of diffuses in and eventually gets sucked away by the return and we kind of come back to a normal state. Uh, we can make some animations, I'm going to show you that, but the first thing I always do with, with a transient analysis is I typically always uh, automatically put in a time value so we know what time it, uh, the simulation is showing and we can animate this. So you can see the time value increasing and then it starts increasing faster as diffusion happens and then it gets sucked away. So fairly quickly the little amount of nitrogen we've spilled or we've released in the room gets sucked away and you could have, I could have done this but on a desk or anywhere in this model maybe under a fume hill hood to see where it would spread. Uh, some of the other useful things to visualize is we can visualize a, a ISO surface. So, for example, maybe we, we want to look at ISO, uh, O2 uh, mass fraction at 20%. So where, where is that line that's 20% oxygen? Okay. And we can visualize, visualize this over time. So initially, this is a surface where you can see that as we start releasing the gas into the room, it started to fill up the bottom, and then it starts to settle down as we start as the gas starts to mix with the the flow coming in. And after three minutes, this is the line, and you, we can we can also try, you know, ten percent to see what that looks like. It'll be right at, at the bottom of the, uh, the floor. So in addition to oxygen and obviously full natural convection buoyancy is included in this, in this model. We have all of the temperatures uh, on the wall specified so we can take a look at the, the temperature here. And this model is a little bit different, but you can see it's very cold on the bottom, and there's uh, 
uh, it's much hotter on top. And the temperature here is a little bit different because my boundary conditions wasn't quite what I specified in this model, but the idea is the same. So just by switching the, the material to, uh, to a mixture from a constant material, a variable composition mixture, we can look at the diffusion of different types of gases in an environment. Um, we can also enable things like phase change if needed. Uh, that gets more complicated uh, numerically. Um, and there's a, a variety of other models. So for example, you can have, here we have a mixture of oxygen and air, but we can also have additional phases like dispersed fluid for particle droplets, uh, particle dispersed solids, there can, there can be solid uh, particle transport or droplet with phase change and evaporation and sprays. So many different options available for these simulations. Uh, hopefully you enjoy this quick tutorial on the uh, setting up a multi-phase analysis, uh, at least a basic mixture analysis in SSCFD uh, and how to set up a transient simulation. Um, you can also plot charts and curves to look at, if I define an expression, I can specify how much of the, um, the concentration in the room changes over time. I can define a plane and measure the amount of concentration of, of uh, oxygen or nitrogen or any other mixture at that level. So hopefully this was an interesting video. If you like it, please like this video, click on the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, thanks again from Singularity Engineering and have a good day.